you are assigned to do a presentation, you sit down there for an hour and you do not know how to start and what to do with that to make it impactful and purposeful. If this is your first time here to the 10 Tab Book Club channel, my name is Billy Chan and I like to talk to people and learn from them. Today, we have Lake Hong together with us and Lake Hong are going to teach you how you can be an effective presentation. Structure your presentation material, deliver it impactfully and the most important, drive results. Let's hear from Lake Hong sharing now. Hi, thank you Billy. Yeah. All right, uh, good morning everybody. My name is Lake Hong. Uh, for your information, I was an engineer many years ago. All right. <laughs> So that's why I come up with this topic saying that engineers are not boring presenter. All right, so I just 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 to ask is it because I, I like to do this session uh, a little bit interactive. Lah. So we do it like a discussion since some of you are here and if you are watching this online, uh, feel free to stop me or drop by or eventually post any comment that you like to do. We'll do it like interaction. I will pause and answer some of your questions. Because presentation is something very individual, right? There is no the right way of doing it. It's basically how you want to do it, all right? So, uh, so I may share certain idea, what I think from my career learning from public speaking, presentation, now I may share certain idea, uh, but you may totally disagree. It's fine, all right? Because as I say, it's very individual. Right, so I'm going to give you some idea that uh, how would you able to grab people attention, especially when you are doing a presentation. So just show your hand. Uh, do you guys in Intel often need to do presentation? Yes, okay. Right? So in what occasion you need to do presentation? Maybe we can have some shout out. You know? In what occasion that you need to do a presentation? Sorry? Like you should again during a meeting. What else? In what situation that do you need to do presentation? Ah, pitching. Okay. But so when you do a presentation, uh, I mean, does you have this what we call butterfly in your stomach? Uh, so when you say hey, you come out and do presentation, you're like, my turn, all right? Okay. okay. So, so I'm going to give you some idea. But one of the very challenging part doing presentation is uh, all presenter worry is no one is paying attention. Right? This is something that all presenter will feel very uh, uncomfortable or malu or, or whatnot. Right? So when, when no one is paying attention. Okay. So, uh, but in actual fact, working? Okay, so in actual, okay, no one want to listen to a boring presentation. All right, so whenever you find someone who are presenting very boring in another word, very sien, right? So everybody get fall asleep. Uh, but another fact is this. No one want to be a boring presenter either. All right. Whoever come out to do a presentation, you don't want to be recognized as the person who are a boring presenter. Correct or not? Okay. But the true fact here is this, yet many presentations are either very uh, inspired or very self-centered. Okay. So let's, let's probably do a, a, a quick discussion for those who are online. You can type your comment inside the chat. Huh? What makes a presentation boring? In your opinion. Okay. You attended many meetings, correct? All right. Many conferences, many events. And sometimes you have a speaker who go out there and do so-called boring presentation. Okay. So what makes you feel uh, that presentation or classify that presentation as boring? Confidence, meaning that the presenter do not present confidently. All right, what else? I saw there's a hundred slides to go. <laughs> Another 100 <laughs> slides to go and you are like, what, half an hour gone. <laughs> okay, so too much content 
Okay. Too much contract. There's a set that say presenter reading the PowerPoint. Ah, presenter reading the PowerPoint, meaning that you have a slide full of words, then the presenter just read from the slide. Okay. So what else? Monotonous. Monotonous, all right. The, the sound is uh, one line. Okay, what else? What else that you classify as a boring presentation? Oh, I can see over here. Does not engage with audience, all right. Okay. So there are many things that contribute to a boring presentation. But yet, uh, when you, it's your turn to stand up and present, you might also make, make similar mistakes. Sorry, Anna. Okay. So, uh, I properly would, would, would like to classify these few things. Okay, number one, uh, when you as a presenter, I think the key thing here is you need to understand who are your audience. All right? What do your audience want from that particular presentation? Because uh, I started, as I said just now, I started off my career as an engineer many years ago. Uh, the, the, the bad news is I never make it to Intel. All right, I work somewhere <laughs> else, but I never make it to Intel. So Intel is a very cool place, right? I started my career as an engineer, but I spent most of my career in sales. So I was selling uh, electronic components to Intel back then in PG12 and you know, your old building. I never been here, All right? So there was one time I was invited to a so-called product launch uh, by a renowned semiconductor company. So during that product launching section, the product manager was on stage presenting the new chipset that the company just launched. And the way that the presenter do it, uh, it is so technical. Even though we are engineer, all right, but we are sitting there have basically no idea or cannot understand what is the information being trans uh, transpired, all right? So you see, one of the thing here is this. Uh, some presenter will like to use industry jargon to present something, all right? And even though you are presenting very technically, all right, I, my suggestion is always use simple, easy to understand language. Imagine that you are presenting your product to a group of 15 years old, right? So you want to avoid all those type of industry jargon. True, when you use those industry jargon or very technical term, it makes you very smart on stage. Okay? It makes you the smartest person in the room. But that's not the point, right? The point here is how do you make the audience understand what you're trying to say? Right? So making smart, uh, making yourself look smart does not help your presentation. Because why you want to do the presentation at the first place is to transform message that you want the audience to understand. So like my uh, experience in, in that product launching, the whole idea was the presenter needs to introduce the new semiconductor chipset to us as a salesperson to sell that product. Correct. Right? So if we are salesperson and we have no idea or have challenge understanding what your product can do, I have no way to sell. Right. So it will be very difficult. So if you look at great presenter, of course, my favorite is always Steve Jobs. All right. He is basically my favorite. Huh? Oh. You see that how Steve Jobs or Apple position their product. All right. They have very advanced uh, technology inside their product. But whenever you see Steve Jobs on stage, he always uses the most simplest term that general public or even though kids would understand. All right, so imagine like the first generation iPod, all right, was launched back in year 2000. It was 22 years ago, right? Steve Jobs or Apple never tell you that this is a 5 gig MP3 player, right? So 22 years ago, 5 gig is a huge thing. Lah. Now it's nothing. Lah. But Steve Jobs never tell you that this is a 5 gig overpriced MP3 player. 
right? They just, they, they just tell you something so simple is what? 1,000 songs in your pocket. All right? So they make the consumer or the audience, the target audience, understand easily how your product can make my life better. So it's not about feature dropping. It's not about technical spec. It's not about the engineering design. It's not important. Because to consumer, to, to your target audience, you want to understand by listening to you how your message or your product can make my life better. Right? So imagine that if you are entering a meeting, all right, you are presenting your idea or, or whatnot. The whole idea here is what is the objective for you standing in front to present? Right? So you must think in a way that how my message is going to help my audience do their job better, improve their life, right? Meet your KPI and get your promotion. Right? So you have to think in the way that how are you going to make your audience lives better, right? Because confusing messages, our brain basically will block, right? It's just like, it's just like, you no, know, our brain is constantly uh, filtering noise. All those information that is not important or not relevant to us, we, our brain basically will filter off. And this happened not only on presentation, it happened in every single communication channel. Uh, because I do a lot of marketing and sales related type of training. So imagine that if you are uh, advertising on Facebook, right? And basically, you will see all sorts of advertisements appear on your Facebook newsfeed, correct? But most of the time, what do you do? You just scroll by, all right? All those kind of advertisement to you doesn't make any sense. You just scroll by. You just ignore those ads, all right? Number one, uh, those ads never resonate with you, even though you may be the target audience of the advertiser. That's why you see the ads, ma. Correct or not? But most of the time, because the app is so boring or it doesn't create any resonance with us, we just scroll by. So as an advertiser, you're basically making Facebook rich, not the product or not the brand. Right? So even though when you are doing marketing, you are doing sales, you're having a sales conversation and whatnot, the one of the things that you need to consider is how are you going to resonate with people? Because our human brain basically will filter out whatever thing that is not important to us. All right? So this will be the thing that you want to uh, uh, consider. And of course, another thing here is this. You want to avoid, as I said just now, industry jargon or something too technical. Because when you present things which require a lot of brain power to produce or to process the, the information, and very easily we get bored, right? Because you need to use so much brain power just to digest what is the presenter trying to say, right? And one is one, one in get into a level that we deem to felt like, oh, this is too complicated. We will ignore that information. Correct or not? All right? So this is, this, this is partly not only psychology, but also biology. This is how our brain functions. So in order to make people understand you easily or getting people attention, you need to make your message as simple as possible. Don't use bombastic language. As simple as possible. Imagine that uh, you are communicating this information with a group of teenagers, right? You are an engineer, your thing is not that simple, right? But the way that you communicate, you have to make it as simple as possible. And one of the difficult part of getting uh, uh, people is to get people attention, right? It's super hard to get people attention these days. 
right? So whether if you are you not know, delivery a presentation, if you are conducting a meeting, advertising, selling, or even on a casual conversation, right? Sometimes it's super hard to get the attention span that you require. Sometimes you listen to a, you go into a meeting, right? Someone say something. 10 seconds later, you take out your phone, you start scrolling your phone. All right? Or you lose the attention of the audience. So it is super hard to get people attention these days. Our attention span becomes so short. So how do you, what do you need to do to get people attention? Anyone? Or anyone online uh, can share. Huh? Any, anyone? How are you going to, let's say, let's say you're going into a meeting, nah, like many of you have happened to be in a meeting, and you'll start talking, you'll start presenting, you, you want to share your idea, and you want to get the audience to buy in, correct? How are you going to get people attention in a short period of time? Okay, I'm an engineer, think. <laughs> Just mention about, post a question re relevant to the audience. Okay, pose a question relevant to audience. Good one. Anyone else? How are you going to get people attention? Ah, uh, this is what I teach in marketing. Share interesting mm -hmm. facts. Uh, Nori mentioned share interesting interesting facts. Share interesting facts. All yeah, right. Price, price and kahoot. Sorry. Price like like award reward lah. Reward. Uh, price, like a uh, gift. So meaning that you, you listen to me, I give you a gift. Uh. Wow, then, <laughs> then, then, then you need have funding. Uh, otherwise, uh, you have 100 people in the room, I give you ang bao uh, if you listen to me. Follow the pain <laughs> point uh, faced by the audience. Ah, follow the pain point faced by the audience. This is a really good one. Uh, got me mention storytelling. Storytelling. Yeah, you can always start, start with a story because story is really engaging. Any, anyone from the, from, from the live audience? How do you normally get people attention? Or you give up? Listen, listen, tama, listen, tapa, tapa. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I'm going to show you a simple example, all right, uh, of storytelling. Uh, one of the powerful things here is uh, to tell a story, all right? And if you read a lot of or watch a lot of presentation type or communication type of material, whether it's book, YouTube, and whatnot, everybody tell you you need to tell a story. Okay, my question is how? How do you tell a story? All right, not all story are interested. Right, some story are pretty boring. Especially, especially people start their grandmother story. Yeah. You know I, how I started my career 20 years ago, I do this, do this, do this, minus 19 years, go to 18 years, 17 years. This is super boring, correct? So telling story, you also need to have certain method or certain framework that trigger people's attention and capture. Right? So I'm going to give you a simple example. Let's look at this. Anyone in this room play tennis? Uh, one person play tennis, two, okay, two play tennis, fantastic. So online, that one you are watching, any one of you play tennis, press one. Let's see anyone play tennis. If you, are, do, if you play tennis, press one in the chat. No one play tennis online. <laughs> <laughs> okay, assuming this, okay, assuming this, uh, let's say I am a tennis coach, right? I teach people how to play tennis, right? Assuming, uh, in actual fact, I'm not. Uh, okay, assuming this. And assuming I go to a networking event, business networking event, right? So in a business networking event, commonly what we will do here is we will exchange name cards with each other, correct? And get to know each other, right? Because business networking, the objective is to get more business money. That's why you go for business networking. So imagine when you are in a business networking event and someone come and ask me, hey, hi, Lee Hong, what do you do? 
So a question will be like this. What do you do? Right? And I answer, I'm a tennis coach. I teach people how to play good tennis. Do you play tennis and looking for a coach? So if I answer in such a way, okay, uh, now everybody, uh, how many of you would be interested to explore further? Online, you press two. If you are interested to explore further, press two. All right, <laughs> one person interested, the rest? No. Because I know you. No, because you know me, okay? Uh, this is pay me, nah. this is give face, right? But so if I go to a networking section, oh, online for people, day two, good, good. Thank you for give face. <laughs> Thank you for giving face. So if I go to an event and I tell people what I do, I'm a tennis coach. I teach people how to play tennis. And would you like to explore further, right? You can see the response is pretty poor. Correct. Okay, let me change a different way of answering. Okay, again, uh, what do you do? But this time, I changed my answer. I say something like this. This day, children seem to have endless supply of energy. They can run all day without getting tired. And we, as we are exhausted as a parent looking after them. I coach children in tennis help them absorb themselves so they can fall asleep early. How about a trial session for your kids? Now, any parents here interested to explore? Right? So again, press 2 if you're interested to explore. So you see, yeah, just now we have how many? We have 10, around 10 people in this room. Before this, only one people give me base. <laughs> Now, can I see how many people will explore? One, two, three, four, five, six. You see, I increase my probability. Part two also in the chat. Right? I just change the way that I respond. I still doing the same thing, correct? Okay, what makes you change your mind when I answer in such a way? So let's go ahead a little bit. Huh? You are engineer, so you're able to Analyze a little bit. Huh? So you see from the sentence, especially this, this part one, huh? the, the, the first paragraph. These day, children seem to have endless, endless, endless supply of energy. They can run all day without getting tired. What am I trying to tell you in this paragraph? Yeah, it's storytelling, but I'm pointing out what? Yes. See, number one, the first one is, I, I answer in a very general way, is most people do in, in any event. What do you do? I am tennis coach. I immediately tell you what I do. But you are not interested in what I do, correct? Who cares? Who cares you are tennis coach? Right? So in this time, I started off my introduction with a problem that my target audience has. And this time, I have a really specific target audience. Parents with kids. All right? And you see, it's, things, things are like this. If you, have, if you have kids at home, like myself, I have a five-year-old daughter at home. Right? Imagine that you have a five-year-old at home and she is super active. That is super challenged to get her to bed early. Right? So how many parents have similar experience? <laughs> right? So I raised a pain point that most parents have. Right? But if you are not parents, you are not yet have kids, or your kid is, is over, I mean, over this age, lah, you don't have to worry about their bedtime, this does not resonate to you. Correct or not? All right? But my order is clear. I only want to target parents with kids. So I raise a problem and pain point that my target audience has. In this case, is kids. Right? Second, in the second paragraph, I provide you a solution. 
to that pain point that you have, right? If your case is running nonstop and it's super challenged to keep uh, to put that to bed, right? It's a problem and pain that you have. Now I am providing you a solution, right? And lastly, I give you a call to action. Would you want to try and explore? Then you can see just now from one person to six person. I just increase my probability of securing business, correct? Or not? So similarly, in anything that you do, you need to factor in this few things. The fourth step comes with this. Number one, you need to talk about a problem that your target audience has. Because problem and pain is the founding mentor to get people attention. Because when I talk about a problem, it resonates with the person. Right? And we only pay, atten pay, pay attention when we have a problem. Correct or not? Imagine that uh, if you go into a meeting and suddenly your boss say, hey, hi team, we have a problem. Do, do this sentence get everybody attention? All right, your boss come into a meeting and say, with, with, a, with a dark face, and say, hi team, we have a big problem. Do you everybody alert? Yes, right or not? And we have a problem on production A. So, any in the meeting room, the person who are not responsible for product A will not my problem, right? But for those who are handling product A, you are like, oh shit, right? So always, you want to get people's attention, very simple. Relate to your target audience problem. And a problem needs to uh, coincide with pain. A problem without pain is not a problem. All right? When there is no headache, you don't have a headache, you won't eat Panadol. Fair enough. You don't shock, shock eat two Panadol like that for fun. You only consume Panadol because you're not feeling well. There is pain involved. So you need to link out the problem with pain. And pain make people want to respond urgently. There's no pain, I can wait. Right? So if you look at any advertisement that caught your attention, is the advertisement has successfully point out a problem you might have. And second, you feel the pain. Pain here can be making you overwhelmed, angry, anxiety, not comfortable, whatever, whatever emotion. All right? That, that make you, that trigger you, you need to pay attention. All right? So your problem must always resonate with pain. Uh, must, these two must go together. A problem without pain is not a problem because the audience do not need to respond urgently. I can wait. It's important, but not urgent. Right? So in order to get people's attention, these two must go hand in hand. Okay. But you cannot present a problem and pain and stop that because you get the whole thing hanging. Right? Then the next step here is you want to show solution. Okay, you have this problem, you have this pain, and it's causing you. Okay, now I have a solution to solve your problem. Then people will, okay, tell me more. Right? So imagine that you go into a meeting room and say, that, Hi, team, we have a problem on this issue. And this issue is causing us, affecting our bonus in the end of the year. It's pain, right? If there is a problem, we have this issue, but this issue bring no effect to everybody in the room. Uh, okay, so no one gonna act quickly, but this issue is gonna affect your promotion and bonus at the end of the year, then you pay attention, correct or not? Because it's what is in for you. And now it make it personal. 
Okay. Next thing here is we're going to do this to solve this. This is where you present the solution. Right? We're going to do this one, two, three to solve this problem. That is where people will now pay attention to what you actually want to say. All right. So when you do the, your next presentation, don't start with the solution. Most people will just say, let's do this. Why? Right. So when you present the problem and pain, you also indirectly tell people why this matter is important. Right. And you can see that it's a transformation. Huh? These two things, the, the first two P is on the negative state. Okay. But on the other side is the positive state. Because after solution, you have present the solution, it's not enough. You have to tamba a little bit booster, what we call success. Why you need to adopt my solution? Because if you buy my product, if you buy into my idea, you apply the way that I suggested, this is how going to make your life better. Right? As I said just now, if you use my method, not only we can hit our KPI this year, we properly can overachieve our target. So our bonus will have a bigger, bigger, bigger bonus. Right? And you need to share how success looks like when people buy into your idea or buy your product. And this works everywhere, especially in the sales environment. The good salespeople, they don't present you the product. They sell you what the product can do for you. Right? Like Apple case, 1,000 songs in your pocket. They give you the imagination. If, if I have an iPod in my pocket, meaning that I'm carrying 1,000 songs in my pocket. Correct? Right? If you work with any uh, financial consultant, whether they are selling insurance, unit trust, or whatever, good consultant will sell you that image. If you buy this plan, your life 20 years later, when you retire, will become like that, like that, like that, like that. Right? right? They are selling you an image, not now, but in the future. That's why you buy that investment plan. Right? In your mind, you can see if nothing happened to me 20 years from now, I pay this much for the next 20 years, I can get back this much, right? Good to say that. What would you do with that money? Then you say, ah, oh, I'm going to go Hawaii, la, travel the world, la, and do whatever thing, right? They plan the image of how success looks like. So when you are pitching for an idea, you need to give people that image. So if I if you buy into my idea, if I pitch this idea to you, we're going to do this project. And when the project is successful, this is how our life is going to look like. Then people will buy in. And you can see that there is a very clear transformation from the 2P red color, negative state, to the blue color is positive state. And all of us love transformation. Right? Whether you are watching movie, reading novel, all story happen because of transformation. You look any movie that you watch, good movie always tell you the hero starting from the early of the movie yeah, is normally in some not so good condition. Right? And towards the end of the movie, something happened to, to, to the character and they transform. All good movie are like this. If you watch Iron Man, right? Tony Stark was a jerk at the first Iron Man, correct? Or not? He is self selfish. Uh, he only think about himself. He's a super playboy, whatever, right? And when you when when you see towards the end, like end game, he is selfless. He sacrificed himself to bring back the world. So you see, there's a very clear transformation before after. All right. So similarly, when you are presenting, you need to give your audience that path to transform. Right? You have a problem, you are in pain. I have this solution to help you. If you adopt my idea, 
your life will become better. So you can see it's always about the target audience. It's not about the presenter. Right? Nobody cares about the presenter. Right? But as a presenter, what is your objective? To get your message across. Right? Okay, so let's summarize uh, what we have uh, shared. Okay, number one, when you do a presentation, start with the audience. Exactly, you need to understand who are you presenting to. All right, so in, in the environment of business, sales, and marketing, you may have different audience. Same product, but selling to different audience. So you need to have different set of message. Not like one thing kill everybody, yeah? one, 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 one tactic apply to all. No, you have to be specific because when you did communicate with different audience, it's different. So maybe you may have the same thing when you present your idea to your boss and when you present your idea to your colleague peers, it could be totally different message. All right? Because what your boss want and what your peers want may not be the same. All right? Then you present the four PPSS. All right? And lastly, okay, this is also super important. After people who have listened to your presentation, what is what do you want them to do? What's the call to action? All right. A lot of time, people just stop them. So exactly what do you want people to do after they listen to you? Do you want them to raise hand to support you? Do you want them to comment? Do you want them to clap hand? All right. Uh, you need to tell people specifically. Never assume people know what to do. People don't, right? Same thing that when I, when I talk about marketing, if you have a website, when you have spent resources, investment to drive traffic to your website, what do you want the visitor to do on your website? All right, good website has very clear call to action button. Click here, purchase now, book a call, right? When you write an email, end your email with a call to action. What do you expect the other side to do, right? So spell it out clearly. The more clearer your call to action is, the, high, the higher chances of people to respond because people know what to do, right? If you are confused, People don't know what to do, right? So similarly is you just probably just apply this thing and you will have a good presentation, right? Okay, so uh, again, my name is Lek Hong. I do professional training, right? Some of the client I work with is BMW. I train BMW Malaysia, the sales team, all right? So I have a three year project with them. Uh, and also other events that I do. I do digital marketing, sales, and business strategy type of thing. As Billy mentioned, I'm a, a conference speaker. Correct. So I basically just do this. Okay. And uh, this is my LinkedIn profile. You can go to LinkedIn and type my name, Lek Hong. It's, it should be a unique name. Not many people have same name with me. <laughs> right. And if I in some way have add value to you this morning, uh, you can drop by and connect with me and also write me a recommendation if you if I have add value to you. All right? So and that's all. Thank you very much. Resume to oh, sorry. I think your program is very powerful from resume writing from to even politicians, you know, trying to convince people to vote for them. Besides Steve Jobs, uh, anyone else would you recommend us to watch as a practice or you know? As a practice, a uh, uh, good presenter, uh, as politician, I like Obama. Obama is superb. You see how Obama, especially on stage, uh, is superb. Uh, Richard Branson, Richard Branson is superb. Elon Musk, not that good presenter, uh, but he is an inspiring figure. Uh, uh, if you know Jim Rohn, Jim Ron is a very, uh, he already passed away. He basically is the father of 
uh, personal development. How, how do you spell his surname? Jim Ron, J I M R R O H N. Jim Ron. He's a seafu of Tony Robbins, Jack Canfield, Brian Tracy. Huh? These are already seafu. Huh? He's a seafu of all these seafu. So Jim Ron is fantastic. You can watch Jim Ron video over YouTube. All right. So, so yeah. Thank you. Online, ah, yeah, if there is anything here. So, uh, like one question, uh, what is your rule of thumb uh, of the preparation? Because someone might not have kids, right? So if I use the kids to the other people, they might not resonate with them. What's the rule of thumbs? How, uh, like how many that I need to prepare or, or, or in what aspect or something like that? Thank you. you see, I use the tennis example because is you need to be very clear on who are your target audience, right? So I use it very clearly is uh, I know that message will resonate with parents. So I already know who are the audience I want to capture. So you, you need to decide. You cannot capture everybody. But it's impossible, right? So you need to decide on, um, especially on marketing, is you need to capture a big enough market that is, is, is enough for you to, 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 to grow your business, right? So as a tennis coach, I just want to capture a parent with kids. For those who are not yet parents, I have to give up that market, right? So you need to be very uh, uh, target market oriented. Don't hum thumb everybody or I want to sapu everybody. There's no such thing. Sapuing everybody. All right. Any other question? Uh, uh, you can hear me. Okay. Uh, just a, I guess, two part question. So one is like, um, if we do like weekly update, right, to our boss. <laughs> your, your voice, your voice. Uh, uh, <laughs> weekly update to our bosses and all that, right? So do we need to put into this kind of structure or maybe it's a different way of the structure? Meaning you have weekly meetings. Yeah, weekly update, you're just giving them a status report, right? Or oh, this one is this, that's how it's going, no issue, right? Don't worry. Um, do we need to put into this structure? You can, you can, but you see it's like this. It depends on the attention that you are getting. You have no problem getting people attention, then you don't have to purposely do it. Lah. Correct or not? Right? And if you just like doing on a regular update, and it's just a regular update, mm. right? But if you have an issue that you want people attention, and then you have to raise that attention spam level, then you can do that. Okay. And then, and then second part is like, um, let's say if somebody in your presentation or in your meeting, right, is rat holding the, the meeting, it's like, Sorry? Keep rat holding. It's rat like it's like keep on um talking about point number one and then keep on attacking point number one but doesn't want to go to point number two, three, four, right? So how do you handle those kind of situations? Okay, uh then you need to clarify why he is holding on point number one. Mm. You see, it's very important to seek clarity. Clarity. Right? Because we come from different perspectives. Right. I have a different perspective. You have you may think different. So you don't need to defend the thing. You just need to understand why uh, is is that person uh, keep on keep on holding at point number one? Is there any question that you may not answer yet? Mm. All right. So you need to find out important. Is there anything that uh, that that you are not happy with? So as, as similarly, like uh, when we do sales. Uh, when we do sales, uh, we I always suggest to salespeople don't go to price negotiation. Only you, you only go to price negotiation only you solve all concern. Right? So so price negotiation normally is the last step that you do. Right? So you want to make sure the customer clear. Right? You have any concern about the product? about a spec, about our service, about delivery, about warranty, about everything. 
everything all good okay, the only thing that you're not good is price only right uh, then you clear that thing only you talk price so you need to find out the the reason why some people uh, are not happy with otherwise like, like for sales case you jump into price uh, you nego nego the price but they say that i still got problem meaning you have to come back and you're gonna nego the price again Right, something so clarity is important. Okay, mm, all right, thank you. So, uh, let me get a few questions from the chat. Uh, like on this question from Hussein, he asked that typically, how many rounds before you get to the final version of the presentation? What do you mean by final? Round? How, how many rounds? I think, like, how many revision? I guess, before you yeah, get how to the many final revision? Oh, this yes. is the presentation that I want to go with. I guess meaning that you have to practice <laughs> your 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 own slide or what? Uh, Hussein, you have want to unmute yourself. Uh, clarify. You, <laughs> you you guys can hear me. What do you mean by that? Uh, Billy, you can hear me or not? Yeah, I can. Ah, uh, so I think I'm just asking whether uh, like a rehearsal uh, I think it's more to um, this is not the normal. I think this one we can consider like a big presentation, right? So, uh. So you have how many? Uh, I think your guideline are uh, your guideline based on your guideline. Uh, you should have how many at least? So One, meaning two, that three. you you have a you have a big show to to hmm. present. Yeah, correct. I think we assume yeah. it's a uh, yeah big uh, big, big, big presentation. Event, uh, yeah. Yeah. The event that you are presenting, then you yeah. you want to rehearse how many times? Ha, ba yeah, based on your experience and your guideline. No? As many times as you need. <laughs> As many, yeah. okay. As many times as you need. I mean, I mean, uh, I I've been doing this for the last twelve years. I be, I become a pro trainer since two thousand and ten. So I've been doing this for the last twelve years. Okay. Uh, even though until today, even though this presentation, I will have prepared a few times at home. Mm, okay. All right. So so it uh of course number one is how familiar is you with the topic. Right, and you need to present as many times as you need, as comfortable. Right, so one of the key tier here is this. Uh, I give you a simple rule of thumb, lah, huh? meaning that you don't have to look at your slide, you know what to say until that okay. point. Okay, okay, all right, all right, okay, good, good, thanks, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Hussein. So, someone raised their hand, okay. Uh, hey, Josh, you raised your hand, okay, no. all right, okay. I go to the sec the second question and then we can get something uh, someone from the live here. What if I need to have tons of technical slides and material to present? Because when I go with your method, I think I can only engage in them for several starting minutes. Any tips for handling this kind of situations? Okay, uh, if you have very technical thing that you need to go technical. Okay, similarly, how you make your technical layman. I understand that sometimes if you in into a technical meeting, it's unavoidable to talk very technical. Fair enough. All right, but how do you make your technical message as layman as possible? All right, so that everybody in the room would understand. And you see, this is true. Huh? When you ask people in the room, do you have any question? Most people will have no question, even though they, are, they don't understand. Right or not? Because if I show in the meeting, I don't understand, it makes me look stupid. So I will pretend I know. All right. But when you everybody understand, huh? understand, okay, go ahead and do. Uh, when you do that time execution and then you have a problem, huh? then you find that someone don't understand. And what don't you ask then? Uh, I don't know what to ask. Huh? Right, common thing. What? So if you are presenting technical thing, you want to make sure that as layman as possible. All right, use image, visual to explain your point. All right, visual meaning interesting visual, not the boring chart or or diagram. Right, so make it interesting. Right, that's my uh, uh, reply. Question. Okay.
All right. Uh, th thank you, Lehon, for the sharing on this beautiful Monday morning. So just my question is, I think during presentation, it's uh, for me at least, it's very common for us to be fixated on the content and how does the topic sound for me instead of, I think, the target, which is our audience. So my question, what sort of practice can we do so that we are self-aware on the mistake that we are doing in a presentation? Because during presentation, I think we are kind of stressed out with the content itself that we might not have the brain power to realize what sort of mistakes we are doing. So what can we do to practice this in our presentation? Okay, if you do it alone, my suggestion here is you do it in front of a mirror. Then from the mirror, directly reflect. Uh, this technique is shared by the late uh, Kapa Singh. You know, Kapa Singh, uh, when, he, when he go on court, when he was young, uh, he practiced in front of mirror. Uh, how, how he present himself in court, if you are alone. Right? But if you have peers and good friends, this is where you get feedback. All right, you can say, hey, Billy, yeah, watch how I do. After my presentation, can you give me feedback? What, I, what have I done right? What do you like about my presentation? Right? What area do you suggest that I can do better? Right? So even though, even though we are seasoned uh, trainer, I still get feedback from my peers. All right? As I say, we do have a lot of bright spots. No? I'm not perfect in my presentation. Uh, the key point is you don't need to give a perfect delivery, right? But the key point here is, whatever you deliver, does the audience understand? Do you get my message or not? All right, if you get my message, then I done my job, right? Now is how I do it better. So you, 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 you can ask peers for feedback, all right? So that's my uh, suggestion. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, uh, Lehon, there's a fantastic question from uh, Bun Siang. How to understand the target audience if you are going to present at a completely new place? What do you mean? Uh, okay, even though I go for conferences, uh, conferences uh, that the audience is totally stranger. I'm stranger to them, they are stranger to me. Uh, but, but there's one key point here is you need to check with the organizer, for example, we check with organization, uh, what is this conference about? All right. So if this conference, are, for example, like uh, the end of the month, I will have a, a keynote with HRDC. Right? HRDC is running a boot camp for trainer and training provider. So I was invited as one of the uh, keynote speaker. Right. So I need to understand from HRDC is who is coming, who, who are the participants, and I need to think what do they want. All right. So I tell you honestly, uh, the end of the month, the, 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 the conference that I'm going to talk, the context of my presentation is very similar to this one. It's just that I twist it to the audience, to they are trainers. So what do trainers want? No? Basically, trainer want to uh, have more gigs, no? have more business. So I twist my message to those audience. But if you look at the context, uh, 80% the same. You just adjust the content to your audience. So you need to understand who are the audience that you're talking to. I got one more question. Uh, Yao Jing asked, do you ever encounter questions? that you cannot answer during presentation. Ah, How do you react <laughs> to the situation? Ah, okay, I teach you a very simple tactic. If in front of the audience ask you a question that you don't have a good answer or you don't know how to answer, you can always divert this question to another person. It's a technique, right? I said, Billy asked me something that I don't know how to answer. Then I will say, that, hey, what do you think about Billy's question? <laughs> <laughs> It's a technique, all right? Or I will ask back Billy, okay, thank you for your question, but before I answer, can you share what is your point of view? I throw back the question to you. I let you say something first. Uh, then I digest, oh, now I know how to answer. 
this is zap sang lah. You have to go on stage. This is where you have to cepat cepat, you know, pandai pandai handle the situation. Hmm. There's no more questions from the chat. Um, anyone have question here? All right. If not, uh, Le Hong, thanks for. All right. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. <laughs> This is the end of Lake Hall Sharing. If you like video like this, do remember to like and subscribe to us because we are going to have more video like this every month. So if Lake Hall's video resonates to you, do check out some communication and presentation video that I posted over here. See you next month and happy learning. Bye bye.